Okay. How do we restore our farm soils and profit? Now, I'm going to talk about this money from a practical point of view because I'm, I'm, I'm a farmer. Okay. Just really quickly, I'm from central New South Wales, around about there. We've been there for, not me personally, but my family's been there for about 150 years. Uh, so, myself and my, my son Nick, it's just granite soils, 600 mil rainfall, certainly more than what you fellas are getting here, central tablelands. So we have got a few different enterprises. Uh, Moreno started, my father started in the 1940s. Uh, Kelby Dog started, we sell dogs all over the world. Um, so, some cropping about, um, oh, I forgot, yeah, there's, there's a couple of thousand acres here. So we run 4,000 sheep. Um, and another enterprise that's come out of all this, which is harvest and selling native grass seed. And that's because I restored the grassland. But I'll get on to, I'll move on from that. More importantly, how can we be more profitable? And um, to start with, before I go any further into, into this, I've got absolutely nothing to sell you, <laughs> so, which is part of where I'm coming from. We, no matter who we talk to, someone wants to sell us something. So no, nothing, I've got nothing to sell you. Um, so, but to be more profitable, we really need to know uh, what's gone wrong. And when I get around to many places in, uh, in other countries as well, go onto properties and the first thing you see is really poor soil structure. Um, and many paddocks and whole properties, un uh, 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 unproductive, uh, with, poor, with, with hard compacted soils and heaps of weeds, and it's very common. And I'd suggest that soil structure is one of our first things we need to fix. But we don't need to fix it with a bloody big plough or, 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 or a deep time. Um, we can fix it otherwise. So some of the reasons for our decline on our properties and, and, and as I said before, all around the world are these things like ploughing and cultivating, ploughing and uh, disc ploughs, mulboard ploughs before them, is one of the worst things we've ever invented. They're the most destructive bloody things uh, maybe other than rabbits, that, that have been inflicted on us. So we absolutely need to move away from that. Zero tillage has been a, a definitely a step forward in that. Poor grazing management all over the world. Animals have created deserts. Um, and it's not the animal that's the problem, it's the human managing them. So, and excessive use of fertiliser and pesticides now is a major problem for us. Not only does this stuff cost too much, but it, it's doing huge damage to our soils. And I'm looking at the word excessive here. Before I go any further, I'm not an organic producer, still use some fertiliser and, and minimal uh, pesticides. So I'm not talking about none of this, we, no fertiliser, no pesticide, but excessive use of those has caused a lot of problems. So how can we fix our farms, soil nutrient decline, insect attack, all of those problems, um, as well as being productive and profitable? And that's important. But how can this be done without spending excessive amounts of money? And just about everyone on the land now, not only in this country, but all around the world, are doing it bloody hard. And <laughs> no matter what, what, what or where you are, or how, how good a farmer uh, like you may be, it's still not easy financially. And part of that is the need to spend excessive amounts of money, uh, mainly on buying inputs. So, so increasing fertiliser and pesticides will not fix our farms because we're trying to fix the wrong thing. Most of our farms uh, the, sort, the ecosystems are, are broken. In fact, uh, that, that's not just, is, is the farm itself, the farm ecosystem has been destroyed and the soil ecosystem's been destroyed. So, how can we fix that? Now, our farm soils become dysfunctional for all of those reasons I just said. So that's why we need to add ever increasing amounts of fertiliser and pesticides. It's related to the way we farm 
why we need to add all these inputs at excessive levels. And what, what's, what's happening, and you're, <laughs> you're, we're all aware of this, last year you bought X amount, a ton, ton of fertiliser and pesticides, this year it's got to be more and more and more. Uh, it's got to stop somewhere. But we need to find out why all those inputs are needed. And it's not that difficult, really. So we need to allow the farm to function as an ecosystem. Our if our farms function as ecosystems, uh, they'll start to address all of our problems. It can be really simple. This is not difficult stuff at all. So if we allow our, farm our farms and soil to function as ecosystems, we get better nutrient cycling, which means less fertiliser. No insect attack, and, 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 and so we don't need insecticide. No plant disease. Um, no fungicide, less animal disease and more profit. So we need to start by fixing our soil. We've got to work from the ground up. And this can only be done by growing more plants. And guess what? If we grow more plants, we'll make more money. I'll tell you, that, oh, yeah, no, I will tell you a little story. I've got to watch Oliver over here ring the bell in a minute. So. <laughs> I was doing a, a talk a bit like this in Griffith about 20 years ago. Now, as we knew at that time, Griffith was the drug capital of the world, of, of Australia. And I used that, that, that statement, but what I said was, if we grow more grass, we'll make more money. And the whole audience fell on the floor laughing. Because so, <laughs> it was very relevant to Griffith being the drug capital of Australia. Uh, so I've changed that to plants. <laughs> So anyway, how do we change and what do we change to? We need some answers here. So you stand up and make grand statements, but you've got to be able to give some answers to some of this stuff. So if we modify, and we only need to modify, we don't need any drastic changes with this. If we modify the way we graze animals and grow crops and pastures, we will restore soil structure, improve nutrient cycling, Improve water infiltration, improve water holding capacity, all of these things, increase soil carbon, we will then, or we can then, reduce inputs of fertiliser and pesticides and increase profit. So, I'm going to touch a tiny bit on grazing management, mainly because I just like this photo, this, this cartoon. <laughs> so, and that's why I don't run cattle, or many cattle. <laughs> so, anyway. Really quickly, there's other people speaking about grazing, so I'm just going to whisk through this. The way we graze animals simply isn't working. Set stock grazing is very destructive. Kills grasslands and pastures, it destroys the soil ecosystem, soil compaction issues, that stuff, and destroys farm ecosystem. Not as quickly as the dish plough, but, but it, 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 over time, does poor grazing management is very destructive. Nothing wrong with the animals, I might add. Animals, we, we absolutely need animals to be able to get uh, nutrient cycling and many of the beneficials and profit. So a grazing rotation with long plant recovery times, and I stress long plant recovery times, will increase perennial grassland species, decrease weeds and help restore soil ecosystem. That's just what we're doing at home. We run about, well, mobs of two and a half thousand adults. I won't go into this much. When we've got cattle, we put them with the sheep and look at a three or four month uh, recovery period for the plants. I'd suggest here in the drier environments you need longer, longer plant recovery period than that. And I'll leave that to the other people talking about grazing. So I've told you just about enough there to get make stuff dangerous to yourself. So, growing crops for grain and stock feed and or. Um, so, as I said before, ploughing has been a major problem. Modern cropping methods, which is zero tillage, weed control with, with uh, herbicides, really, when we think about it, has simply replaced the plough with the boom spray and pesticides. Now, it's certainly better than ploughing, but we really haven't quite got there. Now, are there other ways of doing it? And there are, um, and combinations of things that really work well, and Tom is going to speak today about some stuff he's doing. He's, do, he's doing some great stuff here in, in the SA here. So I, I won't, don't need to worry too much about uh, covers too much. But um, how do we change? Change the way crops are growing. 
Single species crops are a large part of the problem. Single species plants over our landscape are a large part of the problem. Perennial and annual cover crops can help restore our farm ecosystems and soil. Remember I said earlier, grow more plants? And it's interesting, if we grow more plants, we can make more money. It's, it's, it's simple. So, annual cover crops, create ground cover control weeds, conserve moisture, do a lot of things, help restore the soil. And guess what? That's how we garden. You know, you ask someone about a veggie, veggie patch, they put a whole heap of straw on, on their garden. In fact, it should be compulsory for every farmer in this country to watch Costa's gardening show on Sunday. We'll learn more about how to farm by watching Costa than we probably will from anyone else. But anyway, that's, how we, that's what we do with, it, with our with gardens. And it's been done for hundreds, of, if not thousands of years. So why don't we do it in our paddocks? Why, why are we... we uh, farming with, with just constantly bare soils. We don't do that in our gardens. So, just to move on a bit, the pasture cropping that I developed uh, 30 odd years ago, uh, which is now being adopted all over the world, um, is actually perennial cover cropping. And I'm not going to talk a lot about this. Um, this is just a photo of a uh, sowing crop this year. Uh, into crop of oats, May this year, into dormant um, native grassland. Now, zero tilling, uh, and that perennial grass is actually the cover. It's like an annual cover crop, but this in, in this case it's perennial. You don't have to re-sow that. So we're planting into that. When it's dormant, if it's dormant, it does not affect the, the grain crop. And, and more so than that, that grass then will get better and better and the more, as, as we plant more crops into it. We'll stimulate, we can and do, it does stimulate the germination of seed that's in the soil of all sorts of different species. Now there's 60 species in these grasslands. So, just a little sequence, very quick sequence of, of cropping, zero tillage, thing in, into to litter, ground cover. That's later in the year. That's um, that stage. So we can grow fairly handy crops um, before harvest, and that's harvesting. Now, um, that one there is a fairly old photo, um, and I've shown that photo all over the world to many different types of people. If you're if you're a cropper, like you're just a continuous cropper, no animals, you look at that and say, look at all the weeds in the crop. Yeah. But if you've got run cattle or sheep or yeah, you were grazier, totally different mindset. Look at that and you think, oh wow, look at all the feed in the crop. That green in there is actually native summer growing grasses that uh, has emerged out of its winter dormancy and they're growing in underneath the crop. It wasn't there in the winter, it wasn't growing actively. So, um, depends on which hat you put on, <laughs> whether, that's, whether you see that as good or bad. But it's very profitable. So, just a tiny bit, only a tiny bit, a uh, tiny bit on, on can it work here? It, it will most definitely work in grasslands, but in Western Australia, uh, very few native uh, species left there. There's been some work done now, a fair while ago, 2008, growing green panic, which is a warm season summer growing grass in their very low rainfalls on sand. <laughs> In, in West Australia, uh, uh, growing barley amongst or into uh, that and panic. So it's the same, same process as I use, except that's an introduced grass. And with quite respectable yields of barley. So, just to move on to multi species crops and cover crops. Um, now, all these ones that I've been sowing are, are pasture crops, they're sown into grasslands. But they don't have to be. And again, I think Tom's going to talk about this in more detail today. Uh, this is grassland, but it doesn't matter in, in your sense if you haven't got any grasses. These covers are, are, are do an extremely good job. So that's just a photo of a few different things in, in grass. There's another one of the, um, oh, just a mix that I use. Uh, you can have a lot more species than that. In fact, 10 or more is, is better than four or five. 
Um, uh, but so, uh, so, so on in there, there's oats in there, everything's in there. I was asked a question yesterday and I, I will comment it, on it today. I let that crop go through to, to, um, to see whether I could harvest all that seed at once. We, didn't graze, we did graze it earlier, but let it go to seed. And because no one had done it. My harvesting contractor thinks I'm a total rat bag, and he's right. <laughs> so he harvested that and we got a mix of seed. Now, it, uh, I just use it to resow it as, as a multi-species mix. But um, a, a, as far as a practical grain crop, it's not, not that practical. But you can harvest more than one species at once. So, but these multi-species crops can do a lot of things. They, do, they can produce superior quality uh, stock feed to start with. Faster improved in soil health, soil structure, all of that. Add nitrogen with legu legumes and scavenger and, and scavenger plants as well to cycle nutrients. <laughs> Weed control. Insect control with flowering and beneficial flowering plants to attract beneficial insects. Um, now we need to remember that these uh, crops are also biological soil primers. So multi-species crops will uh, uh, prime the soil biologically and uh, prime the soil for a following cash crop. So now I've got a bit here on a grazing trial that, that we did. It was an MLA slash Landcare funded trial. I was seeing some really good results of animal performance on these multi-species crops. So I, I thought, well, there was no figures on it. We didn't know just how good they were or whether that was, I was imagining things. So set up a trial, split a paddock in half, small paddock in half, and split a mob, mob of merino lambs in, in half. Um, we used herbicide to, to uh, I did it fairly conventionally, um, and uh, used use fertiliser, that's the mix we used uh, as well. The cost, uh, the, not, counting, not counting machinery costs, um, $183 compared to $140 of just barley on its own. So we were comparing barley with a multi-species mix. The multi-species mix also had barley in it. The grazing results is interesting. I'm not going to go through this in much detail uh, at all, other than that there was 300 grams per day compared to 149. There was double weight gain per per day, and after 57 days, for two months, there was double weight gain, eight and a half kilos they, they, these lambs had put on compared to 17 on the multi-species mix. So they did really well on it. Down the bottom, like, <laughs> this was done, this was 2020, so lambs were $7, $7 there, then not that much now. So these figures are irrelevant on today's lamb prices, the f but the figures then were, $1,100 compared to, to uh, $2,000 a hectare. Um, certainly very profitable, just in weight, just measuring weight gains on, on, on animals. The other thing that came up was we, we started to do some me soil measurements. Very interesting. With a multi-species crop, that the carbon increased by 21% and decreased by 15% on, on the barley. That's only in a six-month period. I wasn't expecting anything like that. Um, I didn't think that would be long enough. Nitrogen increased under the multi-species, decreased under the barley, a single species crop. Phosphorus increased far more than, than the, 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 the barley crop. Calcium, magnesium also. Now, not all of those minerals increased. Some of them, some of them did decrease, some stayed the same. Uh, but these main ones certainly increased. What did I do on the property? Um, and, and, and so and we measured the changes. By the way, the property at home is one of the most researched in Australia. Um, that we've had most universities involved in it, CSIRO involved in it. The reason why, when I first started, um, I could see these changes happening on the property, like soil structure improved. We were getting uh, perennial plants emerging that weren't there before. Um, Everything was getting healthier. So I thought, no bass is going to believe this, so we better see if we can get some, some serious uh, measurements on it. So, so I, I just contacted 
CSIRO and a few of these organisations, and surprising, well, especially CSIRO, they were interested in, in, in looking at it. The universities were always, always pretty keen to, to get to have a look at some figures on it. So, I changed the grazing management in 1993, um, and, and I changed the cropping management to pasture cropping in 1993, and I developed multi-species uh, pasture cropping in 2010. I might add, I, I introduced the concept of, um, of multi-species crops into Australia around, around that time, and it's the fastest adoption of anything I've ever seen. Not so much in the cropping side of things, but in the animal performance. The fastest running animals uh, have really jumped on board with that. It, it's the fastest thing I've been involved in of adoption. So, what were the results? We now have a restored perennial grassland. It's, and it's increased from 10% to over 80% since 1999, when we, when we first started uh, measuring this. Annual weeds have increased, uh, sorry, decreased from 60% from down to 5%. Um, and the grassland species have increased from 9 to 60. We haven't used any insecticide for over 25 years and we don't get insect attack in crops or pastures. How's that possible? No insecticide, no insect attack. So, haven't used fungicide for uh, over, over 25 years and we don't get diseases in crops or pastures now as well. No fungicide, not even seed dressing. Don't use seed dressings either. So, the property used to be a high input in my father's era. A lot of fertiliser, a lot of superphosphate annually on the property. And um, I, don't, I haven't used fertiliser on the pastures for over 40 years. And crop fertiliser has been reduced by 70%. Still using some fertiliser. Um, but, and I, I wonder about that at times. It's probably still only a bit of a security blanket. I probably don't even need that. But you tend to... <laughs> the oh, I better put a bit on. I'm not sure whether I'm doing the right thing. So, just a little bit here. Uh, this is just a couple of paddocks that have been monitored a lot. Um, it's probably, it would be, it is the, the longest uh, soil carbon measurement things in Australia. It's probably you know, early 20 odd years we've been uh, measuring soil carbon to depth on these com on comparisons on these paddocks. So, there's, there's the, just the, 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 down the profile. That's 500 mil cup yeah, down, down there, about two foot. Uh, and the neighbouring pl plate, that, the one on the left is there, and the soil sample on, on that, that neighbouring place is actually my, my brother's place. And all we're me me measuring or monitoring here, I changed, he stayed the same. So, uh, and then continued to, to that down that track. So if we look at what carbon we've sequestered, we've actually, um, Increased the soil carbon by almost 60 ton per hectare, 59 ton per hectare, uh, over over a fair period of time. Um, that equates to 213 ton of carbon dioxide we've removed from the atmosphere and put in the soil through plants. Again, it's the plants that do all this. Um, that soil holds far more water than that one. And interestingly, we did great, uh, like very detailed soil analysis, and all of them. The nutrient in that soil increased by, I mean all of them, like trace elements, the whole lot, uh, by an average of 162%. Um, and, and pH has changed from 6.2 to uh, uh, 5.2 to over 6. No lime being put on, the, on either of those paddocks. So you'd wonder what's going on here. Um, so, is it profitable? I now save over $100,000 annually compared to what we used to do, especially in my father's era and, and early part of my farming uh, life on the farm. That's money we don't spend anymore because I, natural systems or all Mother Nature is actually doing that control, insect control, uh, soils have improved, so we don't need fertiliser, we don't have much fertiliser. Uh, and we don't need pesticides. Now, if we look at profit here, annual income is higher. We're running more livestock now than we did 
with those high input, high fertiliser uh, uh, yields. Crop yields are similar, more quality is better. We now sell over a couple of tonne of native grass seed a year. Um, the carbon levels are increasing and all those soil nutrients are increasing with over $100,000 less inputs and less, less labour. So that's not counting labour, that $100,000. Now, <laughs> I said this yesterday, but one of the things that I, I did, which I sort of wondered why I did it I went afterward, I worked out, I calculated how much money I'd saved in a, every, <laughs> by saving $100,000 each year. And it gets to over a million, a couple of million dollars or so. <laughs> That's all right, but I've got no bloody idea where the two million dollars went. <laughs> so, so <laughs> it's been suggested that I drank it, and it's probably right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so how do we restore our farms? Change the way we graze animals, change the way we grow crops. Um, but we can do, there's plenty of things. There's a lot of different ways of doing this. I, I've just said what I did on my farm. There's a lot of really good ideas out there. I haven't got to do, do, do that. There's all sorts of good ideas. It's not just, that's the rules. There's plenty of other things. Other ways if you start searching for them. So, grow more plants. It's that simple. Plants restore our farm soils and profit. Thank you.